nothing much changed in education for the past decades, despite of the technological revolution that we live. We see things in the industry, bring in cutting edge technology to make human life better. However, education is not treated as an industry. We have to do a lot of R&Ds. We have to do a lot of research and development to excite the youth into education. And I think this is the serious challenge. One of the things that we can look at as education is boring. Just look at our kids when they have a day off or a break. What's a great day to joy and celebrate? Why? Because it's a day off. So at school is really becoming very rigid, very theoretical base. Well, maybe in our old days, we used to enjoy also days off. But I think what's making it worse now is that our teachers also enjoy the day off, and it's a break. So really, education became a, um, obsolete in a sense that it's not really connecting with the real world. It's not really connecting with the practical part. And if we just quickly take a look at the um, evolution of education in a short history, in the past four centuries, that's not a short history, but in the 18th century, education was a prestigious commodity. It was only for the aristocrats who will have that opportunity to get a quality education. And then we got into the 19th century with the Industrial Revolution, there was a huge demand for a tradesman, machinists and welders. So the education was geared to prepare those tradesmen. However, when we got into the 20th century, it became very theoretically based. So the objective is to earn a degree. The objective is not to look for a career. I'll get a degree from college, and then I'm going to send my resume to different companies and employers. Hopefully, somebody going to hire me. And I have to go through an on-job training for some time until I become a qualified employee. So the rigid structure of education for the 20th century is not really catering for the individualized learning and the interest. And this is something seriously we have to look at. So what we really need is to prepare education for professionals. And I think in the 21st century, it is a must that we need to graduate youngsters with the interest of a career profession. Youngsters, they see their future while they are in middle school, what they want to do, and that's what excites them, and that's what should really motivate them to become. So in fact, our education system has a lot of extra fat. Extra fat in a sense of outcomes. So many things we have to learn. We spend 12 years K to 12. We have to memorize so many things. That is not relevant to our interests or our career. For example, why do we have to memorize the reasons of the falling of the Roman Empire 100 years ago? So there's so many extra things. And in fact, when we reflect back in our education system, we learn so much. How useful, how applicable is it? It just disappeared uh, once you finished your test exam. So with this extra fat, I think also added more problem because we designed our education system to be one size fit all. All the students has to go through K-12 and then four years in college. And it is not really looking after the, the, the individualized learning and the talents of this group of students. And I think this is a real problem. Why? Because if we look at a typical Emirati, Ali, for example, finishes at high school at the, at the age of 18, go to college for five years, or six years like Hamid, and then get a college degree, and then look for a job. Hopefully, he will be hired somewhere. And then goes and another two years of on-job training. That's 25 years to bring qualified employee at the workplace. 
That's a quarter of a century. That's a time of a serious waste for Ali and for the society and for the government. And if we take out this extra fat, I'm sure we should be able to graduate a better, more interested uh, students. And who are to be blamed for all this? Honestly, it is us, the PhDs. We think we figure it out all. We know what is best for students. We know what's best for the industry. So the industry, stay away from us. We'll get you the best qualified graduates. Yet, again, it is very disconnected from the real world. So I think the PhDs is what re who are really created this problem. Add to that is the new breed of the human race. We're talking about the so-called the next generation. Those youngsters are, seems to be smarter than us. And that's what Hamid mentioned about his daughter. He's absolutely right. We find kids at the age of four and five, they're so good in iPad, they know how to download games, have different emails, chat with their friends, and they barely read alphabets. How do they do that? I think it is, what is happening is that their brains is digitally rewired. It is true, by the way. There was an MIT research paper was published back, back in October, talked about those youngsters who are with their brain being rewired when they get oriented into to certain tasks. And I think with those uh, digital revolution that is happening, kids are really bright, smart. And I think this is what's really make them seems to be a smarter generation. Now this is adds much higher level of challenge to us as an educators. It is very scary for a teacher when they stand up in front of those group of students who have access to all these information and knowledge with a click of a button. But the problem as is we as an educator, we are very stubborn. Yes, we encourage to use the technology inside the classroom, but hey, if you bring your iPhone or a smartphone, we'll confiscate it from you. Isn't that strange? So we're encouraging students to use the technology, but you no, you're supposed to listen to me. I'm the teacher. If you <coughs> use your iPhone or any other access of these technology, it will be a distraction to you. So it's really making us a very challenging uh, to bring an education system. But when we talk about education system, how do we change it? How do we revamp the education system? Well, it is, let's look at the component of any education system. K to 12, school, college degree, and then, then an industrial training. And I think the challenge is that to bring those three elements under one umbrella. It's not easy, but things we have to do it this way. What do I mean by that? Let's bring part of the college education into our high school system. So the students learn about different technologies, subjects that we there typically learn about in college into high school. Not only that, let's bring part of the industrial training into our high school system. Give the student the exposure of a real training. What's a professional world is like when they are in high school. So this is what will really pre prepare students who are like hit the ground and run, who are ready and they are very highly motivated and excited about education. So the merge of those three entities, it's very important, but it's also very difficult to make. And in the, if we talk about the UAE, because all the issues I just talked about, it's a globally applicable in any education system anywhere else in the world. But if we talk about in the UAE specifically, it is very critical. Why? Is to bring Emiratis, and this is what Hamid mentioned earlier to bring Emiratis excitement about learning. The 10 to 12 percent is the percentage of Emiratis in the UAE manpower. That is a small percentage. But the advantage also, the strength of the UAE is having about 90 percent of expats who are helping us to build this nation, which is something is great to us. In the, main, in the meantime, we have to really invest into those 10 to 12 percent. How do we bring the best quality of education to those 10 to 12 percent? Because in the UAE, we cannot afford 
to lose a single Emirati brain, whether it's a male or female. Yes, maybe female are smarter than us. <laughs> but having both of us on board to build this nation, it is very critical. And this is what sustained the strategic investment that UAE government is making in the nuclear, semiconductor, aerospace, petrochemicals, and of course, oil and gas. All these industries does require a sustainable UAE manpower to, to have it uh, continue. So the time is ticking. We have a very ambitious vision by our leadership, the Abu Dhabi 2030, and that is really requires to bring human capital, Emiratis on board, excited about those professions. So one good example I would like to share with you is that there is a model in the UAE of, a, of such an education system called the Institute of Applied Technology, IAT. And what they do at the IAT is that they bring application and practical part into the classroom and school. So for example, our students have the opportunity to learn math and science, by doing robotics programming, or megatronics, or electronics, or AutoCAD. Those subjects that usually taught at the tertiary level, IAT brought them to the high school level. And I think that puts a lot of excitement to the students to learn. That's very important. That gears them toward the interest into the science and technology. Because one thing we have to realize in the UAE is that more than 70% of, of our students choose the art stream instead of the science stream. And when we talk about the great ambitious plan of Abu Dhabi Vision 2030, that does not serve our industrial requirements. So, and the reason is that because science is a very rigid subject. It's very theoretically based. Like I said, it is very disconnected from the practical world. So bringing those kind of application to students earlier on, it makes a difference. And it is important that we continue to work together to bridge that knowing doing gap. And I think this is, is very critical for the next generation. Not only that, at the Institute of Applied Technology, they give this industrial internship opportunity for the students when they are in high school. For example, they just send a group of students to NASA Space Center in Houston a couple of weeks ago. Imagine kids at the age of 14 and 15 have that kind of exciting an opportunity. What an eye opening for those kids at that age. They also have a chance to send students to South Korea to work in a nuclear power plant. Again, you know, kids at that age to work with the Korean engineers in a real nuclear power reactor that's something very exciting for, for, for students at that age. And you find them when they come back, very committed to this profession. They are hooked into this profession, and that's what they want to do in the future. And those kind of opportunities of giving our students the international experience of the real world, and also the local experience, it adds a lot of value. But that is happening only in the UAE because of His Highness the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. And I'll tell you a very important secret. Because he puts pressure on both industry and education to work together to come up with the best education model. Industry has to hire Emiratis into the technical professions. And school has to correct their curriculum and programs and to bring Emirati students interested into those profession. Having the pressure on both would make this model working because naturally, always we find education systems are very disconnected from industry. They don't like to talk to each other. Why? Well, the industry got fed up with the PhDs 
give me your graduate, I will fix them in two years, get them very productive at the workplace. But here, again, that waste of time is not affordable, and we have to do it together because of His Highness vision. So, I would like to share with you quickly another picture. This is a picture about Katatib. This is where he, they used to, back in the, in the early 1900s and the back in the 1800s, in the old days, teach kids about reading and writing through memorizing Holy Quran. And if you notice, by the way, that's a co-education model. Because that, the last person who sits in that, that's, that's a girl. So the co-education model was existing here. Until the early 1900s, when the structured education system was introduced, the Katatib phased out and disappeared. But un unfortunately, the structured model system became too structured as an education. And if we, as an educators, to change this model system, it is going to phase out in the next 10 to 20 years. So it is very important that we have to work together and to join hand <coughs> to be able to revamp our education system, to bring excitement to youth, and to make our education system interesting and exciting to learn, and not just forcing students to learn, bring in their interest uh, about learning. So for youth and for youngsters, you are the hope, you are the future, and you're going to make it. Yes.